Hi friends, welcome back for another video from TDL DIY. So we got some uh, pretty good, we got a project going on today. It's pretty cool. Hard line in the garage and I'll kind of, kind of show you uh, the route I'm going to take. Not only that, but I'm going to show you the compressor and where I've kind of put it for now. This might change in the future, I'm not sure. But at least I have lots of hose and flexibility to be able to change it fairly easy. Over here guys, my compressor. I've stuck it in the corner. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a hard line from here down there. And what I mean by hard line, it's kind of like a PEX, PEX line, which I'm going to show you guys in a minute. We're going to take our line and shoot it straight down here. And then up on the wall, probably roughly where my finger is, uh, I'm going to have a block. That's going to be a spot where I have some, an air outlet. It's going to go up over the garage door and then come down on the other side. And that's going to be another outlet, so it allows me to have air pretty much all over the shop. And yeah, so it should be no issue. So the one thing I'm going to have to do right at the air compressor is figure out maybe a T-fitting or something. I did order a retractable hose, uh, 3 8 inch hose, and get rid of this quarter inch. That's keeping in mind, guys, I'm going to be moving my blast cabinet either on this side or this side. And if I need to, I can always reroute and throw another line somewhere down there. So easy peasy. Uh, we have a hundred feet of line, so I'm not too worried. We, we're going to have enough for sure. All right, so I'm going to show you the kit. I got this kit on sale, guys. So this is kind of what you're getting it in it all. You got a couple blocks. You got two T fittings, uh, four 90 degree push connect fittings. You got six of these threaded. Uh, 3 8 NPT um, to half inch push fittings and some adapters, some uh, shutoff valves, and a way to cut. And this is kind of the deal right here. You can get this on Amazon. Um, so every day on Amazon it's cheaper, but I got it at Princess Auto and it was cheaper on sale. I think I paid $79.99, something like that. So about 80 bucks or 70 bucks, maybe it was $69.99. Um, but yeah, it was a good deal. I think it goes roughly for $120 normal price. If you catch this on sale, uh, get it. It's, it's a great little thing if you're thinking about doing it. Now they do also have 3 8 outside diameter and quarter inch inside diameter. So there's that one too. I think that one's on sale, but by the time you watch this video, it's probably not going to be on sale. But the thing about Princess Auto, is you can price match um, their last sale price so up to 30 days after the sale so that's pretty good and uh, that one is fifty dollars and it's a hundred foot so and you got a lot more little pieces and connections and it's pretty it's a pretty neat kit but I went with uh, the half inch line outside diameter and three eighths inside because uh, I thought that would be perfect size for what I need to do here. Get a hundred foot of hose um, you got six of these things, so it's uh, three eighths on the thread, and then it's the half inch push right there. Uh, a couple shutoff valves, a couple uh, uh, connectors, T fittings, uh, 90 degree fittings. Uh, comes with a cutter too, so that's nice. And a couple came with three blocks, three different styles, so two different styles. You got the one with the two ports, um, up and down, three eighths, and then a back port as well. So I guess it depends on what, if you want the quarter inch or the three eighths, depends on what your fittings, you can switch the block. So that's kind of nice. They also give me this other one, this one's all three eighths uh, fittings, and it gives me a double. So this one might be perfect as soon as I come off the air compressor, if I can put it down here real quick. So maybe I have like air compressor come in, I have a line going out, I might have a dedicated line for my can crusher because, you know, that's an important thing, right? And then another line that will go to my reel. So that might be a perfect, uh, perfect thing here. <clears throat> and I also bought a bunch more of these fittings because I'm not sure how many I needed and I couldn't remember how many was in the kit because I just bought these the other day and I bought this like a week or two ago. So, oh, and then I got these things to hold down the line. So it's half inch rubber insulated clamp. It's in the, um, I believe this is in the electrical section of Princess Auto. 
and all this stuff came from Princess Auto guys. So it's a nice little nice little kit. Now you might be able to get some of this on Amazon. I think I looked really quickly and I couldn't see too much for the size and the fittings and stuff like that. But they do have these exact kits pretty much. Um, I'm not sure if they're power fist or not. Alright guys, so uh, I got back from Princess Auto. I already started away on it. But you need a... Uh, I needed some more plugs. Now these are the brass ones. They're nice and everything. But I think these are... $2.99? Or I went to the hydraulic section, and these were the same recessed plugs, just they actually looked the same color as uh, like a steel, and they were a dollar ninety nine. So they were cheaper, and they actually fit better than these other ones. So if there's a bit of an air leak on this side, I'm going to go and buy some more of those because they were uh, one ninety nine. They're super super cheap. Okay, so I've already started to. Um, put these caps in. All you have to do is put some thread locker on it and uh, yeah just tighten it up. And if you don't have any thread thread tape you know this stuff's real cheap. It's like anywhere from 50 to maybe 80 cents a, a roll. It's pretty cheap. So I started putting this uh, piece on too. I'm just going to uh, continue on. There we go. That's in. Well, I'm going to get this one prepped up, I guess. Throw one of these guys right in the middle here. Because that's going to be on. It's going to go right into uh, the compressor. And I got my valve right here, so this will be the next piece. I don't know if I can get it all done by hand. I might have to throw in the vise. That's it. And that should be good. piece that could replace that and just go in there and then we have one of these guys that will fit on the back. So that is a uh, that is my plan or that is a possible plan so we got this just in case but we got it all prepped up in case we want to do that right away. As for now you know we got these guys here to go here and here we just temporarily put a block in until we get some of the other parts and it's for future expansion that's going to happen fairly quickly I think. So I'm going to place these where they need to go on the ground roughly or in the areas I want to put them. I've already installed the bricks so they ain't going anywhere. Alright so I got this already pre-installed same on the other side they're uh, 48 inches from the bottom of this plate upwards I, you can see my line right there so I did about 48 inches which I figured is a it's a good working height to, to grab on and do that. Drain your tank ahead of time. My tank's already been done, but just for safety, you don't want to be unscrewing that well. It's got pressure because that's going to shoot out and uh, can cause a lot of harm and damage. So. So I think that's probably pretty good. I got this piece on. It might be a little long for now, but that's all right. Um, I'm okay with that. So uh, my wife's gonna give me a hand. We're gonna get this piece strung out. So you wanna go down and we gotta straighten this thing out. Out of it. So 
So I'm going to go down, I'm going to put a couple screws and uh, things down just to hold it, and uh, we'll get back to you here real soon, boys and girls. Over here we're going to run it down underneath, we're probably going to brace it, uh, probably put a screw there and then we'll put one just before the end of the corner. So this is how you cut it. Nice clean cut. I almost made a mistake here. That was, uh, I almost plugged it in and I wanted to go underneath here so almost, almost made a mistake. plug it in and that's how you put these push connects in very simple just push it in and that should be it all right guys quick update so we got that in we got over here and we're gonna go up I thought it was recording uh, I broke as you saw I broke my little cutter if I had my PEX cutter here it would work uh, just great that sucks because I'm just using these and they're not the greatest but that's what we got so we're going to roll with it. Line up. And somewhere in the ballpark of halfway through that. Hey right, guys, it's hard to see, but yeah, we got our line there. All right, guys. So uh, I had some struggles with an exacto knife and stuff like that. So I just went over to uh, and picked up my PEX cutter. This uh, definitely is going to make it a lot easier. So I'm not sure where my GoPro is, so we're going to use my phone here. Um, so yeah, this is what it's looking like, guys. It's looking really good so far. Uh, we got it nice supported there. All down there, good to go. We got our line coming up. We might put a, a piece just to hold it straight. Oops, there we go. Hold it straight, and then we'll probably put another clamp, one or two up there probably. It was this kind of cuddle this uh, rail right here, but I can't. Right where my finger is, I was going to send the line up through here and then get up there, but I don't think we're going to get an... We could have maybe, but I would have had to throw in a bunch of more 90s and this, this line would get in the way and it would probably end up cutting my uh, my airline here. And I don't want that to happen, is get a braze, cut it, and then all my air comes out. And then we would have had an issue right there anyways. So uh, what we're going to do is instead we're going right up to the ceiling and we're going to come across across the ceiling right up in that corner there and come down. I think that's the best way to go about things. Alright guys, so uh Pretty much it. It's the last last pipe install or uh, tube or whatever you want to call this stuff. There it is, all the way down. Looks pretty good. I guess we can pressurize it. See what happens. See if we have any leaks or anything. But uh, yeah, it's in. Pretty sweet. And it's pretty quick, especially if you have uh, uh, like it comes with a, the kit comes with a with the tool, but uh, here it is like mine broke. Maybe I did use it a little bit wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's pretty cheap though. But uh, yeah, if you got a pair of PEX um, cutters, yeah, I'd use that. Hey guys, so this is the moment of truth. We're gonna this is gonna be the first time putting air through this uh, new system I got going on. And I think we're all good. I think everything's blocked off that needs to be blocked off, uh, at least for now. And we're just going to let air into it. Well, let's see what happens. All right, so... Uh, definitely have a leak right here, so...
All right, so we got some air coming out of here. Uh, so we got to investigate that a bit and we'll get back to you. All right, guys, so uh, we finally got it all installed. You can see behind me all the blue line up top and it runs down on both sides. Um, we finally got it all figured out. Basically, I had some air leaks and uh, I'll show you. These, uh, these ones that came in the kit, they're little uh, caps or um, plugs or whatever you want to call them. These copper ones, not very good I found for for uh, sizing and fitment. Um, I do have some other ones I had to buy. Where did I put them? Oh, here they are. So uh, I got these guys. They were in the hydraulic section of Princess Auto and uh, the same thing. It's just these are steel and I think the fitment was a little bit better. I didn't have to put so much um, thread tape on it. And also when I did put, I had to put a decent amount of thread tape on it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it actually got tight. Whereas the other one, it just kept going, going, going all the way in. And then it just kind of like bottomed out, I think. So uh, that, that's the way to go. And those things are only $1.99 each. So they're pretty cheap. So I would recommend if you got the kit, probably just go buy these and replace them. That being said, that was my personal experience. Your kit might actually fit better, who knows? But that's what I found in my uh, my personal experience. I had to adjust the lines a little bit. Um, I wanted them a little bit more square, but uh, on this side over here, that one there, it's a little, little crooked. But uh, I had to do that just to get the airline so it seats right and it won't leak in those joints. So that's the other, that's the other issue I had, um, is that some of these joints, they're a little finicky. So there, if you look inside, which you guys can't see, well, you might be able to. But there's an O-ring inside and uh, just a rubber O-ring. Uh, so that makes the seal. If there's two, it might seal better, but that's the design. Um, some of these, I don't know about the T-fittings, but I know the 90 degree ones and uh, these guys here, they like to be fit. Sometimes if they're not perfectly straight or whatever, sometimes they like to be a little, maybe your cut, maybe it has to do with your cut a little bit too, but sometimes they have to be just manipulated a little bit to make it fit better and there's no leaks. But besides that, uh, you know, it's a fairly quick system to put in to install. So it's, it's, it wouldn't be great for a shop. You probably want hard lines in a shop. But for your garage to make it like a shop setting and to have air in multiple places for relatively cheap, this is the system to go with, I think. Uh, it worked really good for me. That being said, I just installed it. We're gonna find out how it lasts through the winter and the colder months. Uh, we do have heat in here, so time will tell. I don't know how, how the, cause there's gonna be a little bit of water going through the lines a little bit. Um, I wonder how that's gonna all deal with in the winter time we're gonna find out so I will do an update video probably next spring but I think it's a great system so far uh, it was easy fairly easy to it was easy to install then you had troubleshooting with your um, maybe not having not enough um, thread lock on the on their threads uh, adjusting your hoses a little bit making sure they're pushed in or pulled out all the way so those are things to keep in mind I would Instead of screwing, because I all my 90s, I kind of screwed them in first. What I would do is cut it to length, to about where you want it. Make sure all your connections are plugged in and then screw them in. That's what I would recommend. Your fitment might fit a little bit better and you won't have to worry about cutting your hose almost exactly. And then you being maybe a little too short or a little too long. And if you're a little too long and you want a nice straight line, well, what happens is you're gonna get a bit of a, a curve or a bump into it. So um, that's how it is, guys. It looks it looks really good. It's not a very sunny day, so I can actually show you guys, like facing it towards there, but it looks, it looks really good. I'm gonna give you a quick show. Uh, just give me a sec. All right, guys, so uh, this, is, this is the final result. Uh, we did have to throw a little bit of zip ties right here to kind of hold that line, like I said, to, to make it where it's happy and, and not leaking. So as you can see, it's not straight down to it. Uh, and that could just be due to my, my cut. I, I'm not sure. That's what I would, would think. 
just oh, I thought I heard something else, but nope. Seems to be pretty good. So as you can see here, I used the steel one as well. <clears throat> that was originally. And I think I got a steel one back there. Yep. And then the hose runs all the way down. Like we've stated many, many times. But yeah, you can see the blue line goes up to that corner. And up over the garage too, it looks really good. I mean, I, I didn't want it to be up, up there. I wanted it to be like right in behind the door there, like on top of that wooden ledger that runs across there, kind of keep it a little more concealed. But you know what, I don't mind it there. It doesn't look too bad. Would I have liked it to be more concealed? Yes. Now what I would recommend, the less 90 degrees or less fittings you have, the less chance for air leaks and um, the less fail failure points. So if I would have done it again, I would have, even though the 90 degree looks really nice and tight and clean, I would uh, just run that corner. So just make it longer. And then from here, goes up to my block with my air fitting. So it's ready to go if I need it. And then it goes all the way up to the ceiling. Got another 90. Jeez, I'm stepping on everything. And yeah, if we need to extend ever, we can to wherever we want. So it just, it leaves me a lot of flexibility. We will do a update video a little bit later, just to give you an idea what, what, how it lasts in six months or one year, or even just a, you know, a couple months, eight months, or whatever. But we're going to make sure we do that so that when you guys go to do it, um, you guys kind of know what to expect. That being said, if you go and uh, get it ahead of time, no problems, guys. Like for me, I saw my one of my neighbors, I think he did it. And I thought it was great. I thought it was great. It was super easy. Put it in. I didn't realize how much little fussing and little things he had to probably do to make not the air leaks. But I think it's great. Um, do you need to play around with it a bit? Yeah, 